So recently I was catching up with an old student of mine and he was telling me how he'd now moved up north. He's nowhere near where my club is, but fortunately he's found somewhere where he's able to train. And he's really enjoying the classes. He likes the club environment. He enjoys all the members. He's getting on fine. He said his only issue is that the coach is really fat and he's struggling to respect him. And he actually said, you know, I actually reached out because I wanted to get your advice on what to do about it because I'm going to training and I still feel like I'm getting everything I need. I'm getting the feedback. I'm getting the help. I've got the opportunity to train. But when I watch this coach and when I listen to him, I just struggle to have a respect for him because he's just so out of shape. He's such a bad representation of what the sport should be, of what a martial artist should look like. He says he doesn't practice what he preaches. We talked for a while and I thought I'd share some of the things that came up in our conversation. In case you deal with a similar situation, maybe you go visit a new school, you do a trial and you run into something like this, maybe these ideas will help you. Let's start with that idea of practicing what you preach. So that's a very famous saying. We've all heard that, that people should practice what they preach. But does it necessarily apply in places where you're teaching or providing a service? Let's go with a couple of examples here. You'd probably feel better about going to a personal trainer to build muscle if they had muscles themselves. You'd probably feel better about sitting in a barber's chair if he had a nice haircut himself. You're likely going to listen to the doctor who's giving you advice about your big belly and that you need to lose weight if they were slim themselves. But really the question is, is them having these attributes truly validating their credentials and the reason why you should listen or take their advice or use their services at all? A slim PT might have all the knowledge about building muscles but make a personal choice that they don't want to be that big. A good barber isn't necessarily cutting his own hair and maybe he got in the chair of a friend or he's letting one of his students practice on him in the meantime. Maybe your fat doctor is going through a messy divorce and the only thing that's really getting them through it is comfort eating in the evenings. Bringing it back to our example of the coach, just remember what a coach's role is. The coach's role is to be able to provide you information to help you improve as a fighter and be able to communicate that informationally effectively so that you can understand what you need to do in order to improve. But what if a coach is so physically unfit that they can't even demonstrate the techniques that they're trying to teach you? This of course can be a problem because now we're having an issue with being able to pass over the information. Maybe they do have the knowledge, but if they've got no way of demonstrating that knowledge in order for you to learn from it, then we're gonna run into a problem. But take the example of some great boxing coaches such as Teddy Atlas or Freddie Roach. These guys are a lot older now and they're still able to communicate effectively with their fighters and pass on valuable information, even though they're probably not able to throw a punch the way they used to when they were younger. The short version of it is them being out of shape isn't necessarily a sign that they don't know what they're talking about. The other side of this, of course, is being a good role model for your students, being someone that they can look up to and aspire to be like in the future. But as we all know, father time is undefeated. So trying to do that just through our physical acumen and our ability is going to be limited for all of us. As a coach, I believe the way that we become a good role model is being on time, is being committed to our students, is being someone that they can rely on to give them what they need in order for them to improve. Coaching is a craft all to its own, so you want to be a great coach. By being a great coach, you set an example to those who want to be great fighters. Most people know and understand that in order to be a great fighter, you need to sacrifice a lot and commit to very few things. You give up your social life, you give up time with friends and family, you give up a lot of those cheap meals that you enjoy to eat all the time, and this is all replaced by more time spent in the gym, eating foods that necessarily wouldn't be your first choice and generally committing your life to the best possible way in order to make sure that you become the best fighter you can be. What often can go overlooked is how coaches make very similar sacrifices and commitments in support of their athletes. A great coach will often sacrifice their own health, physical well-being and even mental well-being in order to support their fighters. This can simply mean they spend less time training themselves so that they can put more time and energy into those they teach. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to make excuses for people. I believe everyone owes it to themselves and to those they care about to look after their bodies and their minds. The better physical shape and mental well-being that we have, the more we can serve others. 
But what I am saying is that everyone is human and that there's more than just what you see on the surface. If you see someone, maybe they're a little bit overweight or maybe they're massively overweight, it doesn't necessarily just mean that they're fat and lazy. The mistake that people often make with their coaches and with people they look up to in general is that they idolize them, that they put them into this little box within the scope of what they do and they think that they can't be wrong. The issue is, is that really we are all human. We are all broken. We are all damaged in our own special way. And although they might not show it to you in classes, maybe it doesn't come out in the sessions. It doesn't mean that there aren't personal issues going on behind the scenes. We all have our demons and a good coach will keep that out of the training room. Maybe they're fat because they've got a spinal injury from when they were training when they were younger. Maybe they're fat because they're going through things outside of the club and the way that they keep calm and keep themselves in control is by overeating or by undertraining. Is it the right thing to do? Is it ideal? No, it's not. But as I've said, we're all human. So when it comes to good coaching, this is what I really think you should focus on. And when I was speaking to my student, these were the things I said to him to ask himself and to look out for in the training room to know if this coach was worth getting behind. Knowledge. Do they know what they're trying to teach? Do they have a depth of understanding about the topic that they're trying to preach to you? Are they staying up to date with the current trends and with the ever-changing landscape of the fight game? Communication. Do they have the ability to take the knowledge they have and communicate it to you in a way that you understand, in a way that you can digest, assimilate, and then use in your own sparring and eventually within competition? Commitment. Are they there? Are they at the gym? Are they opening the doors? Are they closing it at night? Do they take regular days off? Are they missing for huge patches of time for no given reason? Are you getting the time that you want to get with your coaches? Will they go with you to tournaments? Will they set up seminars? Are they running gradings? Are they involved in the general running of your school and in your personal progress? Finally, kindness, support and empathy. Beyond being able to get you physically ready for what you're going to endure, whether that be through a grading or competition, or just generally to teach you and give you the knowledge that you require, a coach should always be someone that you feel like you can go talk to and share with. Over time, you should develop a relationship with a coach where they understand when you're having a good day or a bad day, where they know the days where you need that little bit of an extra push, and they know the days where they just need to back off and let you do you. A great coach is someone who pushes you forward and can catch you on the few times that you fall backwards. Guys, I hope this video has been helpful for you. If it has done, then please, I'd appreciate it if you hit that like button for me. Subscribe to the channels. We've got new videos coming every week and I will see you on the next one.